What's up YouTube, Zombie Killer here, doing a video on forging. I'm late towards the end game, so there will be some spoilers on abilities that you can do, stuff like that. But anyways, this will be a complete guide to forging, both beginning and mastering the game. So, no matter where you're at, this will be a guide that should help you if you don't already know everything. So, first off, we're going to start off with forging levels. As you'll notice from time to time, your level will increase in forging. What this ha what happens is your main character level up, you'll get more focus points, which will increase your level. You know, your level will increase and you get more focus points. I think also when you get more crafting books, that would also increase your level and give you new abilities, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I haven't done any checking, but that would make sense. But I know for a fact character level up will do it, so I recommend getting your character to max level like you see mine to get the best crafting. I've been grabbing every forging book I could get my hands on. But anyways, now I'm going to go over it all the basic stuff real quick and then I'll get into the more complicated stuff. As you see at the top um, right, I got Perfection Pearls. Perfection, perfection Pearls are earned by crafting items. For example, let me craft um, this for a poncho, which will give me plus four Perfection Pearls. The more difficult the item, the more pearls, which Real quick, I'm just going to do a quick bash. Not really care too much about how this turned out. Just craft as quick as I can. And actually, we're going to do one lighter bash there. There we go. So as you see, I got perfection. That's a plus three in power, which I'll go over that in just a little bit. But anyways, as you see, I got, just got four perfection pills. You can go to rework an item, and as you see, they will require pills to rework. So let's rework the stick since it only costs us one pearl. Now, if you rework an item and you mess up, you will not lose the item. You will not lose any power on the item upgrades. So, as you see, if you appraise it, it will end up no better than when it start ha than when it started, which means it's going to be bad. So we're going to bash that. And as you see, still no better than when it started. Alright, so when you see pretty well, that means that it's going to be a plus one. So we're going to do a light hit. Are you kidding me? Well, then it would say really well, which would be plus two, but <laughs> I did not get that. And then when you see brilliantly, then that means it's a plus three, max tier. So we're going to craft this. Since it's at max tier, the lower level stuff will become easier to craft the more higher level that you are, as you've seen with that ridiculously easy crafting. And the higher level stuff that was impossible before will become possible. Alright, so excluding that, let's go over the more advanced stuff now. So for this, I'm going to craft a more stronger item. We'll go ahead and craft this. Why not? So as you see, this is way higher difficulty at tier 4. So it will not craft as easy, which is what we want. 
so I could demonstrate some stuff. Now, at the top, you'll see your temperature. There's three levels to this temperature, which I'll go over in just a second. But let me go over the batches first, because that's probably a better idea. Um, so, basic bash will be a basic bash. As you see, it costs focus points to use. I have 210 focus points. It costs me five for bash. Now, quad bash will be a bash on two sides. And as you see, it's stronger. Now, this um, quadro bash will be a bash on four sides. You cannot see the other two, but the other two would be directly to the left of it. It would be able to hit four. Quadro bash, even stronger bash with the same four squares. To be honest, I would probably use this over these two. Unless if you need like a lighter hit or if you don't have access to four spaces then and you need to do two, then this would be better. But anyways, then as you see here, this will be a strong strike over two squares. So there would be one down to the bottom, I mean up at the top right where it would do a cross hit, which I should probably never craft a sword. I'll, I'll probably just demonstrate that better. Lightning Bash will um, do a lighter hit. Double Whammy will do a double strength hit. Triple does a triple strength hit. This is your most highest hitting damaging one. But be careful, you can one out focus points fast. This will, this is a strike with increased critical hit chance. But to be honest, it's kind of useless. I would probably stay away from this ability. It's 100% not worth it. And 99% of the time, and even the 1% time, you can easily use a skill that would work way better. Stay away from this. <coughs> All right, Sizzle Puff as you'll see, will increase your temperature by 300. Cold Brew decreases it by 300. Multi Bash, I'll go over in just a second. And Whoosh Bang Rollup is a ability which will do a high hit but it will um, lower the temperature by 150, which is not good. Like it will do a hit, but it will greatly decrease your temperature rapidly. So I recommend staying away from this ability. Now then, multi bash will attack at random on four skills. It's a very good start out one because you can get some areas up, but once you get anywhere as close to the exit, stay away from multi bash. But multi bash also likes to crit a lot. Too, see how the middle's kind of close. I want to stop with multi bash, so I'm going to use triple with me and triple. We we'll use one more triple. Come on. I don't think it's going to pop up for me. Oh well. Come on. Oh well. Anyways, this is a brilliant mil miracle sword. I did not get lucky enough to get um something that pops up at random to pop up on me, so I'm just going to reattempt. It may pop up, it may not. It kind of sucks when it does not, so we're going to try again. So we're going to craft 
a great nah not a great sword I hate those so let's see we're gonna find we're gonna craft a hat what's the uh, alright this will work I don't care this will work yeah this had the highest difficulty so let's do it I'm probably not going to care that much about completing this, but as you see, Quadro Bash, Double Edge, that, and as you see, this will do two areas. I cannot adjust where they're at. They're at their own specific spot. There is no adjustment. Basic hit, Double Whammy, Triple, all the stuff that I so we're going to go ahead and start crafting this all right there we go when you get the inspiration strike to pop up which you will need to level up your forging capabilities a bit to unlock this ability along with the other abilities this is unlocked through playing the game you'll be able to go to master stroke and as you see you can see that now, you do not have to use this straight away. So, I'm going to demonstrate what's better to do. Instead of using it, keep up with crafting. And get close to completion. But yeah, multi bash because it's so cheap, it becomes very useful. All right, that should be good. So as you see, now I'm going to use this, which will guarantee critical hits. Which by using this, I'll be able to use this bash and easy perfection. As you see, it will be tier 3, no problem. That's the smartest way to go about it. So, tier 3, yeah, 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 come on. Now, there is a musical song that plays after you make a tier 3. But, because I have the music off, you will not hear it. Because, copyright. I'm not taking a chance on it. Alright, now then, another thing to show off about this is I just demonstrated how some of those abilities work. The only ones that are really worth using. So, um, I'm going to demonstrate the temperatures now. As you see at the top, the temperature is 1000, and it's in red. Red is the best that you can get. It is your full it's your full power strikes. You cannot go above red. You can increase the temperature as much as you like all the way up to a hundred thousand, even though it's not possible to actually do, and it's still gonna stay red. So let's go and knock it down. And now you see it's a um yellow. Yellow is your medium power strikes. Less damage that it will do. When you're getting closer to try to perfection something, the less damage you have is better so that you don't accidentally overshoot it. But then past that you got um the pretty much I'm just gonna call it uh, hmm. It's more like a duckish brown, to be honest. But anyways, with that. So, as you see, this will be your lowest power strike. As you see, a triple whammy. Without a crit, please. 24. So, we're going to go ahead and boost ourselves up to yellow. As you see, triple whammy. 
No quits. <laughs> uh, quits everywhere. I think you'd quit chance. You know what? I'm just gonna make this perfect. Yeah, I think quit chances increase based off on what level you are too. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways. We'll just continue. Come on. We'll craft another fur poncho. Alright. And I'm going to show you the exact numbers that they go down at. Which is a good idea to keep track. So we're going to cool it down. And then as you see. Once we hit 600. It's now at the yellow. Then we're going to go ahead and cool it down. And as you see, once we hit 200, now it's the darkish brown. Which as you see, 8 damage because it's darkish brown. Once at yellow, 14 damage. Red. Without a crit, please. Well, I still got 14 out of that. But the damage is a little bit randomized. Because you'll get a... How it's designed is you'll get um, anywhere in between the numbers that will allow for the hits. So for example, which I do not know the exact numbers that they use. Let's say dark brown it's between 5 to 10 that will do. It will do any number in between there. Then let's say yellow it does maybe 10 through 15. Then you could get any number in between there. And let's say red is 15 to 20. You would get any number in between that. You do not know exactly which values you are going to get. Unless if you really research it. But yeah, it will be a randomized number. Just aim for the center the best that you can. And you should be good. You know, it, it can take a while to master the game of crafting. But as long as you stick with um, some of the info from here, you should be good. Now then, we're gonna go ahead and craft one of the more difficult items that you'll see early on, a ring. As you see, the ring have two different areas, which, you know, your basic bash will not be all that powerful, so let's just cope with ourselves. There we go. So right, we're not that strong. And you might have maybe these three abilities if you're lucky. When you first start out. So, you know, it's going to take a while. And as you see, your first good ability is right here that's actually going to help out with the ring. As you see, we're bash, which you'd be doing less, probably, because I'm such high level. It just gives me an unfair boost. But yeah, but you would see that when situations like this comes, multi bash will be great. Now then, just for a nice easy completion. But as you see, the color will not change. It will not increase my hit. 
you know I'm already at 4,000 so we're gonna go ahead and use this and triple whammy done And perfection. Which I should probably craft a higher tier ring. Let me see if I got a, what higher tier ring I could craft to actually demonstrate better because early on rings will be a nightmare to upgrade. Alright, highest tier ring right here. Which should still be easy, unfortunately. But, um, as you see, a basic bass ain't gonna do much. Double edge, useless. Qu quadro bash would let you hit both sides, but still kind of not ideal. This, both sides, but still kind of not ideal. This, one hit. This, a lighter hit. Not really useful. So you kind of need double whammy, triple whammy. Crack shot still not useful. Heating up and cooling down is only useful when you need to heat up or cool down, so that's not going to help you out too much. Big wall up, huge cool down, which means you got to spend more energy on sizzle puff, so that's not going to be useful. So you only have, with this situation, light, um, double whammy, triple whammy. And multi bash that's actually useful for you. So for this, I would highly recommend with the rings if you can use multi bash. As you see, we got that, so I'm just gonna save that for later. But each crafting material will still have—I mean, crafting um, item will have the same thing. All wings will have the same game. The difficulty will change. And there are different effects that might happen based off on difficulty. Like sometimes it will heal itself. Which can be both good and bad. It can be good because you might accidentally overshot and then it can fix it for you. And it could be bad because you could be almost there and it takes it away and then you're out of focus where it just stopped you from crafting. But on top of that, wow, I really should have not done that yet. So as you see pretty well. really well so that's part plus two and then brilliantly which means plus three but yeah so um yeah you want to make sure when you do use that to finish up though that they are close enough that we'll finish it up but yeah um there's a healing that can do there's a um Focus cost increase and decrease that can do. And it can also have spots start glowing where if you hit that spot, you'll get a critical hit chance boost and critical hit power boost. So if you would normally have 5% critical hit chance, which these are random numbers, I don't know its exact formula. But let's say you have 5 by default critical hit chance and it gives you plus 5, that's 10% critical hit chance. And let's say that you would quit for 20, well actually, let's just say 60, that might, the boost from it would probably boost you up to maybe 80 or something like that. So, it can be useful. So keep an eye out for those and... Um, let's see, any other special tricks that the game does? There's the cost. I think I discussed everything. I might have missed one or two things, but I tried to discuss everything. So just use your Billy Smart within what you got, and hopefully things will be good. 
like I said, multi bash. Make sure once you get close to actually touching the thing that you stop using it. It's by far the best ability because it's four time hit. Really pretty good crit chance, it always seems like. And, you know, the only problem is it's random, which is one thing I cannot stand about it, but. I still use it all the time. It has helped me craft stuff that without that ability, I would never stand a chance of crafting. But if you're not able to craft something because you keep on one out of focus points and it's too difficult, come back when you're a higher level. If you're max level, then just do what you can. <laughs> you might have to try it over and over again. Like for example, I know one item that gave me a lot of trouble let's see where is it I have way too much stuff um let's see should be somewhere in here No, it's not look at split. Where is it? Oh, ah, here we are. Brilliant blade. This is one of the most hardest ones to upgrade. Even with my high levels. I end up messing this up so many times. And it will cost 30 pearls each time to try. I do have a guide up how you can get infant pearls, but yeah. So, two handed weapons, uh, you know, two handed great swords are a pain to craft. They're probably the most difficult to craft of all. Because you just gotta hit so many spaces and stuff. So, it can consume a lot of your focus. But, you know, as you see, with a standard version, I would get 227 damage. With plus one, three, I mean, 327 damage. With plus one, 335 damage. Plus two, 344 damage. Plus three, 353 damage. So as you see, it goes up. So it can be useful and worth it to upgrade weapons and stuff to plus three in case if you're wondering why I haven't upgraded the pirate king pendant or the bunny tails it's because as you see well actually I should probably upgrade the pendant to be honest the pendant's actually worth upgrading I was too lazy with the pendant but um the bunny tails I'm not really caring that much about three agility as you see, I would only get plus three agility for it. And the only thing I actually equip the bunny tail for is the slightly increased item drop rate. So I'm not that worried about the three agility, which would add up to a total of six. I'm not that worried about it. If the boosts are very small, that's not worth it. Now the weaker the item usually the weaker the boost so for example bunny tails are very low tier items as you see difficulties half a star so the boost that gives you not really all that well where with this it's more stars so as you see it gives you plus three then plus another three then plus four and then down below with the defense is what I was talking about down below you got um, plus 10 plus 10 and then plus 10 for 80 percent curse protection which is good but um, you know when you do build your characters you might want to think about what you want but some items like for example right here which I should be upgrading this I've been too lazy but some items like this as you see the reviving fallen ally thing is actually a ability of the staff when used in battle 
So upgrading it does not give it a boost to that. Now because I had this equipped as a main weapon for the person, yes I should have upgraded it to plus 3. I've been kind of not really caring about upgrading. Same goes with Jade. I should have upgraded this because as you see even though the enemy defeated defense reduced when attacking and oomphal effect at the start of battle does not increase the attack will still go up. Parry chance though will stay the same. Some abilities some stuff will not change. Pass upgrading but usually weapons more damage, armor more defense and special items more whatever the special stats are. Special items would be the bunny tail, you know, the equipment, the accessories. But anyways, hopefully this guide helps you. I tried to give you the best info that I could give. This is all stuff I learned throughout playing this game, crafting all the items. Oh yeah, I almost forgot one more thing to mention. After you craft something, you can see the number that you own and stuff. You can also see where you dropped it from what you get for stats but um and the items that you need some items could be bought some could be found at the sparkling spots but um anyways as you see next to my bronze sword you'll see a star icon the star icon means that you crafted the highest level form of that weapon so i crafted a plus three as you see with this this is a weapon where there is no additional levels to it. You can only craft it standard, in which case it will instantly be a plus three. But the, this is a super rare one-time item apparently, because I haven't found another one. And one of the ingredients to craft is a sword that you cannot buy or nothing. It, I think I got it probably from a chest, most likely. I think that's where I got it. But anyways, so as you see, this cannot be upgraded. Also, um, craft. When you're crafting, you wanna try to make sure that if you can keep like one or two additional materials. Like, for example, let's go somewhere, is it? Ah, come on. Let me craft, um, not weapon. Let me go to, um, Alright, so as you see, for example, like this. I have one additional fire, firewood in my inventory, as you see. So, since I need more firewood, by having that one item in my thing, so if it would cost three, I would probably hold off on crafting it until you had a fourth one. But I could go to my items and then check out firewood. Come on, gotta be here somewhere. There we go. And as you can see, I can find out it's dropped by those monsters or found in Mount Huji. In which case, if it's found in a location, I could go straight to that location instead of searching all over the world for it. Alternatively, you could just look up a guide, but um, you can do how it however you want. But anyways, by having the item, it will make it easier to but yeah with having the star icon that means that you crafted the best now you will not be able to see it because I've already crafted the best of all these but if the star is not there and it's an empty box that means that you have yet to craft the item and if the box is checked marked then that means that you have crafted the item but you haven't crafted the best variant. In which case you can always go to 
you could always try to craft an item, go to, and then if you fail, go to rework, and then you can upgrade to plus three. So if I made a uh, plus one uber miracle sword, I could go down here and rework it to make it into a plus three. Or let's say, for example, with a stick, it dropped from, all right, wait, let me see something that drops from my enemy. Yeah, I'm gonna probably have to go. Yeah. Uh, nope. Here we go. This drops from an enemy. Let's say I got this from a Cyclops, right? And one of my crafting things up here was the same exact vest. So let's say right here. Oh, I had to craft it, that vest. I could actually skip spending the materials and go down to rework make it into a plus three vest then I could go back up here and let's say the vest was right here I would see a star next to it saying I have a tier three and I did not even have to spend whatever material the vest was but yeah so you know you can use um, reworking an item to get away with not having to craft the item or use it as a finalize if you care about having plus three on all your stuff anyways I think this should just about do it for everything I learned within my time of playing Dragon Quest 11 when it comes to crafting I put hundreds of hours into this game and I don't even want to think about how many hours crafting and trying to figure out the best way to craft. So hopefully all these tips will help you. And I'll see you guys on the next video.